Thanks, Eric. Boop. Okay. Well, I figured this is as good a place as any to start the new year off. Um, thanks for coming. Thanks to Eric for having me. Um, I didn't even know this existed until like a month ago when I came up here and hung out with Eric over at the Mill Street house and uh, we just talked about doing this and he invited me to come up here and speak and I told myself last year I wasn't going to speak again in public. So um, <laughs> cheers to that in the new year. Um, <laughs> But I guess I can't, you know, can only go up from here. So if I make a complete fool of myself this morning, then that's okay. You just keep coming back, it'll get better. I'm curious if anyone in, in the room doesn't know who this is, because that would be kind of amazing to me. Um, I found out this episode of Mr. Rogers was actually aired in 81, so it's actually older than I am, which is um, kind of crazy, because I'll be 35 this year. But I wanted to start. Um, with this because, I mean, he was an inspiration to not just myself growing up and, you know, watching his episodes. He's now, they've made, what is it, Daniel's Tiger that my, my little girl loves to watch in the morning. But it's just so, like, down to earth, so simple. It's just, just ridiculous. Um, the kind of, I mean, he just goes through this episode and he's not even really good. He just is self-admitting. He's like, I'm not good at drawing, but... He's like, I'm going to try this thing. And that kind of goes back to my story. I'm not, I don't have an art degree. I, you know, I didn't really go to school for this. I've just been drawing since I can remember. That's my story in a nutshell. If, um, if we were to sit down and have coffee, have a beer, I, you know, I'd tell you much of the same thing. That it's just practice, 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 practice. Um, and I've been doing that for over 10 years professionally now. Well, not professionally, but really pushing myself towards where I'm at today. Um, <clears throat> so one of the things I think in, in, in my work and maybe in, in all of our work that we, um, I guess I'll just speak for myself, right? Because that's the best place to, to, to start. Um, creating is really about knowing a knowing yourself and knowing the value that you have in yourself and for me struggling through that and comparing myself to other people and trying to look at other people's work and mimicking other um, it really doesn't do any good for for when we're sitting down for when we're making when we're creating it just doesn't feel true it doesn't feel for me it doesn't feel honest enough um, and I think a lot of that can be reflected back in how we think about ourselves and one of the things I was thinking about I mean it's the fourth the third we're not even into a full week of the new year, um, about how much you matter, how about, about how much I matter. And I think when we think about ourselves in a positive way like that, when we're sitting down and when we're working, I think that can come through and that can affect and influence our work and that can go out and influence other people to do what they need to do and to do what they love to do. So I love this, um, this reminder is, is to myself um, as much as anything. And I think it kind of ties back to that, um, to that Mr. Rogers episode. And he's saying, I'm not really any good at drawing, but as long as you're having fun doing it. And that's something that I think gets stolen so much from us as creatives, um, whether we're on a tight deadline, whether we just hate the project we're working on. Um, or whether we're just not happy with where we're at and what we're making. But for me, I, I feel like I constantly come back to this, like, I just want to have fun in what I'm doing. I want to take, I want to strip all that away, and I want to make sure that, like, I'm getting paid to draw this, or I'm, you know, like, I'm just having free time just to lose myself and just to explore. And I think it doesn't have to be, we don't have to overcomplicate things, you know, we can just enjoy the work and as long as I think we're making it fun, that's what's, that's what's most important. And inspiration is overrated, I think. Um, I feel like it's such a hot topic and everyone wants to know how do you get inspired, where do you look for inspiration. Um, I feel like we're constantly distracting ourselves to try to be inspired, that we're losing the time that it takes to sit and silence and to, to be still 
um, to turn the music off, to turn the notifications off on our phone, and just to be still for a second. Because for me, that's, that's when inspiration comes, when we can quiet ourselves, and we can sit and dedicate ourselves to, to just sitting down and to working, and to surrendering ourselves into that process. We don't have to have the right music, or we don't have to have the right setup, or the right tools, or any of that. All the tools are just superfluous. It doesn't matter. What, for inspiration to come, we just have to be there. We have to, we have to show up every day and practice. Um, for me, that's what I've found true in my life. When I try and make that happen, when I try and force inspiration to come, it just frustrates me. And I just feel like I'm spinning my gears for nothing. Um, so yeah, I feel like it's a little bit talking about it and like hoping for it and trying to make inspiration happen. I think that can be a little overrated. So this is a, a, a little bit of a reflection from, from the beginning of, end of last year um, <laughs> and beginning of this year. And I like that, I just like that saying all the shit we say and, and do not make because it's really just myself looking in a mirror. And you could say the shit we think or whatever, but I spent, I've, I can't tell you how many times in the last five years I've worked for myself that I've talked about ideas and I'm like, oh, I wanna do this, I wanna do that, and then just don't execute on that. Either one, because I'm afraid, or I'm nervous, or I don't know how, or I don't have the right people around me to make it happen. Um, but I wanna change that this year. I mean, I, I feel like I actually wanna take steps and execute, and I wanna make things, if it's, even if it's as small as like sitting in my studio and making weird whatever that is, you know? And I think part of, um, part of the making process for me is, is not always having to understand what we're making either. Um, that's been a big struggle in my life too, is when I'm making something, I always wanna figure out, okay, ahead of time, what is it that I wanna make, and I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna make that. What's really fun, though, is not having any visible, you know, map in my, in my mind of when I'm drawing and just kind of getting lost on that. So art is something, if not anything, and nothing at the same time. Um, art, to me, I think is just kind of stupid. I think art is... Um, <laughs> Art is kind of dumb. Everyone looks at it differently. We all come to uh, we all come to the table with our own experiences, our own um, stories, our own backgrounds, our own education, training, what what have you. Um, it's all you know. Beauty's in the eye of the beholder. It's um, but there's something so special um, that when we look at something that really captivates us, that really quote unquote inspires us. Um, that it can be anything and everything to us, but we could also walk by something and it's completely nothing to us. It doesn't capture us, it doesn't mean anything to us. So it's kind of like this weird uh, conundrum when we're creating, um, and I think it goes back to, to, to knowing our value and our worth, and as long as we're feeling personally tied into the work that we're making, I think we're not gonna worry about what everyone else is saying, and we're not gonna look to other people to validate us in our work. Okay, so I was in my studio one night. Um, I had a long day. I have every Friday uh, with both my girls. I have a three-year-old and a 10-month-old, so it's all day Friday is just super crazy busy. Um, so I think I told my wife, I was like, I just need 20 minutes. So I went in my studio, um, poured myself a drink, and I just like having to decompress like thoughts that I've been having for months or just like all that stress from the day. Um, so I, I like this one, it says, if nothing lasts forever, then we should, and I, f I think I left off B, making, trying new things at every opportunity. And I love that the impermanence of our work, if we really think about that, anything from today that we post or that we make or that we share online, guaranteed by tomorrow, everyone's gonna be worrying about what's happening tomorrow. That's, that's kind of what I mean by, if, the impermanence of our work. Um, take our portfolios, our, our websites. I mean, all of that stuff. We're in such an information-driven culture now that everyone's just on to the next thing. It's, it's daily, if not hourly. Um, 
but I think that's also, there's something a little freeing in that, that if, if we're coming from that place, then why not try new things? Why not continue to make new things and just keep pushing? Um, everything we make is held to no standards, and nothing controls us quite like the limitations of our own imaginations. Yeah, I just, I don't really know still what, what the first part means, but I, I do know what the, uh, what the bottom part, and I really think sometimes we just get trapped, we get hung up. Um, kind of like what I was saying a second ago, that if I try and have it all figured out in my head before I'm sitting down and drawing, or you know, if I have the plan, the roadmap ahead of me, then that's probably gonna limit me. But if I can be in the moment and be present when I'm making, when I'm creating, then I'm open to impromptu decisions and, and making things happen on the, um, just on the spur of the moment. Uh, this one says, creativity is not a straight line. And I was thinking about that, um, I was thinking about that more on the drive up here this morning, um, especially just driving that big long thir route on 35 up here. But there's no A and B point you know, beginning and end point to, um, to our process, to our lives, um, to our families, to our work, to what, whatever. I mean, you could apply this to anything, but I think we have to be willing to make the hard right turns. We have to be willing to U-turn, and we have to be willing to get lost a little bit because creativity is anything but just getting from the start to the end of a project. Um, we have to be willing to make the, to have bad ideas and, and try them at least. If, we have to be willing to fail a little bit um, in order to, to get where we're going. And so that's why I just kind of, I like this illustration that to me it just totally looks like my life right now and it looks like the way I think. And I just, I feel like that's part of, part of the creative process. And supposedly now Apple doesn't support the clickers, so that's why I'm doing this <laughs> nice button push over here. <laughs> I think this is the end, the last one. I wanted to kind of keep it short because I wanted to do Q&A at the end. Uh, there we go. So yeah, I just, I love that he goes through this. He's like, yeah, I don't really know how to draw, but it doesn't matter. And he's just, he's like, it just feels good to make something. And I love that sentiment. I love, because um, I feel that way. Like, I could have a super stressful day and if I get five minutes just to sit down and draw something, there's a part of that that fulfills me. Um, and it's cool too if you, um, I tweeted out the link to this whole video this morning on the PBS website. And he goes on past this and he's saying, he, I think he sings a little song in the only way Mr. Rogers could do it. But um, <laughs> he's talking about imagination and how great imagination is. And he, he says, but if you never actually make something, it, it's, it's all for nothing, basically. I'm summing it up there. Um, but that's so true. Like, if we have everything up in our head and our hopes and our dreams and our imaginations, but if we never physically, tangibly put that down or take that photo or make that video or draw it or paint it or whatever your craft is, whatever you're doing, whatever you love to do, then what's it for? Um, one of the craziest things that I saw in the last few years on, on a Kickstarter, it was a people raising money for a museum of oh, invisible art. Kid you not, it was a museum with nothing in it, and the placards all gave descriptions, and it was like video installations, and it was like paintings and sculptures, and the only thing is you just read the description, and the thought was that you would visualize it in your mind, and that's what the museum was of invisible art. And to me, that was just, it was like a slap in the face. I was like, are you kidding? This, there's no risk. You're not taking any risk here in actually creating. You're, it's, I don't know, it just felt like taking people's money. Um, I've heard the rebuttal, I've heard the other side of that argument that the art could be, that could be the art itself that you're having to, but whatever, I don't think that's true. I think, <laughs> <laughs> I'm standing here having an argument with myself. Um, <laughs> I think we have to be willing to, to take those risks. Um, and to put something down, and to put it out there, um, and to trust ourselves, and to know ourselves, and to love ourselves well enough to know that, like, I made this, and I feel good about it, and yeah, I'm still in the process of learning and getting better, but this is where I'm at right now. 
and feels good. How are we doing? Good on time? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's um, that was all the slides I had. So I'd love to do Q and A if anyone has any questions, and hopefully I can have some answers. On site, my mural work is probably 90% complete. Everything starts on paper for me, so, and it's a little different too. I did a, a gallery, an installation in gallery last year, so it was pretty much all up to me. But if it's a paid um, mural, somebody's commissioning it, then yeah, everything would be approved ahead of time in terms of sketches, um, sometimes just showing um, you know, mocking it up, showing what it might look like on the wall. But yeah, oftentimes, depending on the structure of the wall, depending on, you know, if it's cinder block, if it's wood, if it's concrete, um, if it's old brick, then there's, you know, you just have to, um, you can't really know until you're there. So I'd say there's maybe about 10% that's left up to the actual execution if, if anything needs to be adjusted. Um, Primarily, a lot of my mural work has been projected. So that's kind of easy, because you can just, I mean, it's just outlining. What I'm really hoping to do moving forward, and I started this last year, is more freehanding. So I kind of rigged this thing up. Um, who was it? It wasn't Monet. Maybe it was. But he had this old drawing rod, and he had attached a pencil to the end of it. So when I'm working on, I mean, maybe a, a ceiling as tall as these, 14, 12, 14 feet, you can kind of stand from the ground and, and draw on the wall from a distance. So the thing with projection that I liked is if, you're, if I'm close on the wall, then I'm going to lose my perspective. Things are going to get kind of skewed. But if I can stand back on the ground, and I can just kind of freehand stuff on there, I like that feeling because it feels like I'm still getting to reimagine it a little bit, even though I have my reference in hand. It still feels a little bit more authentic and original than just projecting it and tracing that image. Yeah. Yeah, why public spaces? I like the idea that art isn't just for a certain group of people. Um, and coming out of a, a graphic design and web design world, there's so much of a little bubble that, that I lived in, and you just share and you know you just share with this tight-knit group of people. Um, and I like making work that lives outside of, of the internet, of outside of our screens. And so you could do something on this wall and just your everyday person driving by, walking by, whether they know it or not, there's something speaking to them that's affecting them um, in their day to day. So that's one of the things I love to think about making public art is that the, the influence and the effects it has on, on us, um, whether it's passive or really active, whether somebody stops and takes a few minutes to, to look at it and to take it in, or whether it's just out of their peripheral while they're walking or driving by it. Um, that to me is really interesting. Um, and I think, too, one of my goals for making, I want to make larger pieces, is um, I think so many of us today are in this head down position most of our day. And I want, I want to change that. I want to make people look up. I want to, you know, this. I, I, I can't stand, I can't tell you how many times I love people watching. So, like, driving especially really scares me when it's, you're driving down 35 and it's just, and I'm not saying I'm not guilty of it either. But, uh. Yeah, they're just walking, just sitting. We're so um, we're so distracted all the time that I just want to make people stop that and just and look and take something in that's there, that's in your natural environment. <laughs> By having a, a full time job and working on the weekends, um, how did I get clients early on? Word of mouth, I guess. Going to meetups, going to, so I used to go to these little WordPress meetups. This is when I was doing this, I mean, kind of how it all got started was from web design. And then Twitter. This year is like my 10th anniversary on Twitter, which is super weird. Um, and I think just meeting people, just talking to people, um, just trying to get out there and make as many connections maybe. But 
I remember one one of my first projects was a small little website for um, it was for blind like was it blind yeah legally blind and it was like blowing the t the font up on the website to absurd amounts and the guy that I was working with had some sort of hearing impaired techno or not hearing impaired it was like an see I don't know much about like the blind community but it would speak to you basically the words off of the website and that was like one of my very first freelance projects I can remember and then all of that just you know transitioning from that to what I'm doing now and I think putting your work out there like my drawings and stuff using dribble back in the early days um, and then just posting stuff through my website sharing that uh, I think it's still at Eno's pizza in Oak Cliff it's really bad please don't go see it <laughs> it's uh, if you want to though it's they have an upstairs bar and around the side, there's some booths, and they have this like uh, wall mirror, kind of like the the width of this. And they just asked if I wanted to do something. I didn't even. This was before I thought about projection, and it was a mirror too, so that wouldn't have worked. But I just drew on it with I think a white uh, paint marker. It's awful. <laughs> but they were really gracious to me, and then then uh, they opened a place called. I was another restaurant uptown, uh, Union Bear. And they asked me to come into Union Bear, and they had two nice, like, as big as these walls down in the, they had a basement dining room, which was kind of cool. They're not open anymore, which is sad, and that might be why, because who wants to eat in a Dungeness basement? <laughs> um, but they had me, they are like, yeah, whatever you want, and so I did those walls, and I just kind of kept growing from there. And then it's like sharing that work, you know? Um, just, I don't it's like a snowball effect, you know, you do one thing and somebody sees it and then you get to try it again and again and again. Yeah. It's pretty wild. Probably one of the ones that I'm most proud of. Um, the, I don't know if there was a photo of it here before. So there's a trail system uh, they built a couple years ago, the Trinity Strand Trail. And it was the largest piece I've done, I, th I think, still to date. But it's, just, uh, it's a play on words of the JFK quote, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. And instead of country, I, I placed it with city. Um, but I, I think because of the, the intense amount of time it took to do that and watching that progress happen, and at the time, and still at this time, that being the largest thing I've done, that probably gives me the most satisfaction when I drive by it and I see it um, and watching other people go to it and and take photos of it and appreciate it and enjoy it I think um, I'd hope to beat that record this year and make something bigger um, but yeah I think to date that's probably one of my favorites what advice would I give somebody who hasn't made public art yet or hasn't done a mural or anything yeah well, I kind of have this feeling, you know, hand lettering really became on trend like the past couple years really strongly. So now I kind of feel like this this public art mural, whatever, is gonna that's going to be the next wave. Um, and I'm already seeing that happen a lot with a lot of people who are already doing illustrations or or lettering work that are trying to bring it into public spaces. I just think you have to try it though. Um, I don't really think there's any right or wrong way to get started. If, um, if you want to make it on your bedroom wall, go for it. If you find somebody who has a space and, and you have a, a relationship or you want to strike up a conversation, I mean, what's the harm in trying it? If, if it all, all else fails, you can just paint over it, you know? Um, that's kind of how it was for me. I just, I feel like there's no really right time to right or wrong way to do it. I mean, you can have the, you can try and have the right tools, but a lot of times I just use paint markers in the beginning. Um, I use a lot more brushes now and do brush work with paint, but you could go to any art store, you go to Michael's and buy a, a oil-based Sharpie paint marker and you could draw all over these walls, which would actually be kind of awesome. Um, I don't know, is that kind of what you're yeah. looking for? Yeah, I just I think you just have to be willing to take that first step and and try something new, 
and see how you like it. If you, if you love it, then you're going to keep doing it. If it doesn't really make you feel like super good, then you, know, you may just go try something else. Thanks, man. Yeah, thank you.